Hello everybody, it's me again, and I'm going to start a new series of videos related to ASP.NET, in particular web forms. We will be covering, you'll be using uh, Visual Studio to do that, so I have a Visual Studio 2012, and if you watch my previous videos, we used to use Visual Studio 2010, but we created regular project. In this course, we'll be creating actually uh, websites. The way you do it, you click on File, New, Website. Now we want to select C Sharp instead of Visual Basic, so we'll be using C Sharp. And we will use Empty Website. Now there are other templates here you can use, but for now, to learn the basic, we're going to use Website, Empty Website. Okay, I'm gonna give it to, this is first website. Okay, and then we can call it, save it on my desktop for now, hit OK. What happens when you create it, you get a Visual Studio work area or ID very similar to what you had before. You have a Solution Explorer, you have the properties, and then you have controls, toolbox, all right? This is very similar to what we used to have before. Now, if I click on this website, this is a solution explorer, and right click, and you do add, you can add a new item to this website. There, because it's a website technology, a website, we have other options here than the regular applications. So one of the things that we have is that web form. So I'm gonna click on web form. My default page would be my first page in the website, and then I hit okay. Now, what happened here, it creates two things for me. It creates the design, which is, this is your design, and it, I'll go over it in a minute. And you see this default.asp.x, actually there's another file underneath it, and that is your code. So you have the page, the design, and you have the code. This is that, similar to the model view controller we've covered in the iOS, okay? So let's go back to the design. From here to here, it's nothing but HTML. What we have on top is just a directive or it, it telling me that this is a page that is linked to the default ASP.x, uh, ASPX.cs, which is this, and it's, the language we're using is C Sharp, all right? This is specific to ASP.net. All right, if you're in a regular HTML page, you wouldn't see this. All right, what can you do with this page? If we go back to the design, we're gonna create a simple page here with a couple text fields, a label, a text field, and two buttons, okay? So, or one button. So if I say to the label here, it says, welcome to my website, okay? Now, this is not a label, but if you look at this source, this is just a text that appeared in the font and the web page. So how do you actually use labels, some of these controls that are available for us? If we go back to the design, you can delete this. Now, from here, and that is what is web forms, because we're using web forms, I can use these controls. One of the options here, we have a label. You see that, uh, label, drag it. Now, if you, here it's a label, that means just like in previous projects, you can control it, you can access the values, you can do many things with it. So if you can click, uh, if you click on the source, we have a new tag here, it's an ASP label. It's not just a label anymore, an ASP label. Now what happens here, the server translates this to an HTML. So I have a label, this label ID is LBL1, and it runs on the server, that's fine. Now you can design this label, you can design this label in the design, you can change the, uh, this is the label here. You can do the uh, font, you can do the color, foreground color, you can do all of this in here. But that, we don't recommend this. Usually your website has to be consistent. So what are we going to do? We're gonna create a style sheet, file, use it in this project, and 
we will uh, we will uh, include it on all the pages that we want. So we do it again here, right? Right click, add new item. Sorry, here on the website, add add something called style sheets, and then call it style sheet. That's fine. All right. Now I already have style sheets ready, so I'm going to open them up and then just use those. Now if you're not familiar with style sheets, you can look them up on the W3 school or just any books will show you. I have basically the body, this background color, I have a label class, a text class, and a button class. Okay, I'm going to change that to 75 here. All right, my designs are horrible, but it can do better. So in these, you can you can type it if you want. These are the different design. This is a design for button, design for class, and design for label. Why do you do this? So it's consistent in your website. Okay, so I got this. I'm gonna hit Control S to save it. We go back to the default page. Control S. Now I want to use these style sheets that I have it that I have, which is this, styles, CSS. Now if you go to the source, and I wanna use this style sheet in my page, all I have to do is that drag it, drop it into the header, okay? So now I have, oh, so, uh, sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> you want the style sheet, okay? So I have my style sheet in my page, all right? Automatically what happens, it would look for the tags that are defined here and apply them to your page. So if I go to the design, the background color look different now. And this label, I'm gonna change it to say, leave it as label one, but the class here, I can say label class and change that. And I have other classes which are the, for the button and the, and the, and the text, okay? And the text value here, I'm gonna change it to say, welcome to my website, right? Basic stuff, right? All right. To run it, you can run it, just to show you what the page looks like, you can run it, you can select the type of browser you wanna run it on. You can select any of those if you haven't installed. Or, you, and after you select it, the default is of course the uh, Explorer, Windows Explorer, Internet Explorer. So if I run it, I'm running it on Chrome. Say yes, I wanna modify the web configuration to enable debugging, hit okay. And I get this page. Now, on the top, it says localhost 50141, and then this is your default page.espx. Localhost, which Visual Studio has a built-in web server. So before you publish your applications, you can actually test it and run it in the, uh, locally on your Visual Studio, and then when everything is okay, you can publish it, all right? You cannot modify your website, you cannot modify the design, unless you stop this, okay? So if I stop it, I can modify it now. The controls will appear, all right? Okay, so now I wanna add two more text fields. So if I'm gonna add a text field for name, here's a text box, and a text box again, or just copy one and do one and then we copy it, okay? What are we gonna do with this one here? You can. Of course, put a label that says, please enter your name, right? Or you can use the placeholder keyword. Now, the placeholder is an HTML property. It's not an ASP, ASP pro property. So if you look in here and then you try to find a placeholder, you wouldn't find it. You wouldn't find a placeholder here. So how do you add a placeholder here to this one? So you go to the source, here's my code for the text field. You just add a property before the end. It says here, placeholder equal, please 
or enter enter name okay something like that all right if i do control s and then run it you'll see that okay we got a problem here why we got a problem place holder oh because <laughs> i included it outside the tag all right so it's actually should be here okay this is a property for this is attribute for the text field okay i had it outside so if i run it again you'll see that it says enter name here all right so that's good now what else can you do with this you can actually make it required you can use another keyword which is HTML5 keyword to make this required. So if I say required, you can again required is a keyword that would not appear. So if we say required here because it's an HTML5 keyword, now of course you won't see it, but if I hit the enter key, please fill out this field. All right? You got it? So that is required keyword. All right. What else can we do with this? If we go back to the design, we already have designs. We have a style sheet for this one here. So you can go in here and do CSS and select the text class. So it changed. Of course, you do your own thing, OK? All right, so that is good. What else do we have we can do with this? Because it's a regular control, just like uh, just like uh, and visual regular projects, you can give him a name here. The name is your ID. Instead of name, it's an ID here. So we can say txt, and then the name of this is name. All right, and then we're almost ready to go. So I go hit enter again, and then let's add, oops, control copy this, and then add, add another one, control V. And instead of the placeholder here, instead of name, say enter H, for example. So you go to uh, source, and here we say enter The XT name, first we'll change the name, but instead of the name here, we say enter age. All right, and you can change the name here, of course, but I'm going to do it in the design. So you're, you get familiar to this, so you can say the XT age here. All right, the last thing we want to do here, we'll add a label, another label and a button. So I put a label, and this label is going to say LBL message. And the style for this, because I already have a label message, so we can say label style, so I'm going to say label class. All right. You can leave it as label because it will change. Make it, for example, here, uh, instead of text, you can make it empty you want for the text make it empty all right and then we need to add a button and that button goes in here you have a button there's a button and because I have a class for my button you're gonna laugh at this because my button is really bad so button class and here's how it looks like for the text the button we're gonna say what you say instead of that it says check okay it's a simple example you enter your name you enter your age it tells you if you're valid to drive or not yet okay so if we click on run enter name enter age if i do this now if i fill this one here it will tell check the next one and then i have to enter some value here. now the next part how do you put code for this in this button, okay? Well, very similar to Visual Studio from before. You double click on this, here is your button. 
Now you can add your code. You can define a few variables. Int uh, age, <coughs> make it equal to zero, just to the save side. String name, and you can make it equal to blank. I like to do that. And here we're switching from Swift. We have to put a semicolon, all right? So now what do you do next? You say uh, name. We need to access the field from the text page, from the web page. Very similar. Look, look how easy it is. TXT name dot text. That's all. Okay, then you can say age equal to uh, <clears throat> int dot parse. And then you try to parse what? You parse txt age.text. Next, later on, we'll talk about validation and how you can validate all of this. Okay, but for now, this is all what we're doing. Again, I'm getting messed up between the languages. So now I want to say if statement, if uh, age less than 18 says, we say, we'll just put a message saying, Else, if it's less than 18, we say LBL message. Sorry, says the text equal to sorry, and then we will put the name of the person plus name. You have to be, you have not old enough. enough to drive. Okay, I'll just say you need to be 18, 18 and above, older than, need to be older than 18 to drive. All right, semicolon, and uh, there's an error here, which is plus, we need a plus here. Okay, and otherwise, we control copy this, control this here, control V, congrats. Please apply for a permit. For a permit, okay. That's all. Now, this is a basic concept, but we'll expand on this later on. We'll do calculations and other things. So now if I do save, run it, if I type in um, ABC or Omar, that's my son name, and then he's 17. If I do check, sorry, Omar, you need to be older than 18. Okay, and then I have Ella, she is 22. I do this. Congrats, Ella. Please apply for your for a permit. Okay, that's it for this project. All right, and in the next video, we'll do some validation, maybe do which, uh, some exception handling, and then some calculation. All right, I'll see you in the next video.